Before I proceed today, I just would like to briefly thank two people. One reliable, Andrew, who's been a long-time subscriber of mine, uh, way back in the days when I was only making uh, videos about politics and nonsense. Uh, thank you for bringing this to my attention. Once I found out about it, I thought it rather imperative to make a video on the topic, so thank you very much indeed. Uh, additionally, I'd very much like to thank uh, Mr. Mohan, um, who is, I presume, a gentleman of Brazilian origin for uh, his transcription of the Brazilian Portuguese into English. Thank you very much. Without that, it, this not would not have been accessible to me and many, many others. Also, thank you for one of your uh, uh, transcriptions of uh, into Brazilian Portuguese of Girl Rights What's videos. So thank you very much indeed, Mr. Mohan. And this is, uh, thank you very much for this particular transcription uh, because it's such an important topic, the topic being male contraception, uh, the male pill, as it were. Now, before we go ahead to the political aspects of this, uh, traditionally, uh, male contraception, if you look at it just a scientific problem, uh, the issue has always been a hormonal one. That is, the only way you can effectively uh, make a male temporarily uh, infertile is to do something with his testosterone levels. Uh, this generally doesn't work. Um, and the reason it doesn't work is because you lose your libido and um, there are other negative, potentially negative health effects. So it's not good to mess with the body's own testosterone production. Uh, this doctor, this doctor Coutinho, forgive my pronunciation, I don't speak Portuguese, through many decades of rigorous research into the endocrinologist and the field, the area of male reproduction, male contraception, eventually came across something what appears to be cottonseed, properties of cottonseed, um, that increase libido and at the same time render a male temporarily infertile. You'd think this would be look, one, of, one of the discoveries of the century. Very simple. Apparently it's been tested on many thousands of people as well very safe, in addition to being very effective. Uh, it's only temporary, according to him, after about three months your uh, fertility would return. And so we have essentially a male, we do indeed, it's not available, but we have a male pill, a male contraceptive. Those are the medical and scientific aspects of it. Unfortunately, in large measure because of feminists, women, and pharmaceutical industries. Let's not forget the pharmaceutical industrial complex. Science and medicine, whilst able to work within its own sphere, doesn't always have an outlet because of these external political forces. That's an issue. The doctor eventually gets around towards the end of the video telling that when he was at a Congress, I believe in the late 80s, in, in communist Budapest in Hungary, that um, there was controlled opposition, ranting, shouting, protestations coming from feminists. Now, it shouldn't be a secret to anyone who's in the know, anyone who's a man going his own way, or any man in the man's rights movement, uh, men's rights movement, that Women would be fundamentally opposed to any idea of male birth control. You see in the video, uh, there's this accusation that, oh, you couldn't trust men with that because you know, they, they might not really be on it and so on and so forth. That's, that's malarkey, of course, given the fact that uh, most men, uh, particularly men who, who are still chasing after a vagina, would love the option to be able to just you know, ejaculate and not worry about the pregnancy issue. No consequences, I suppose. So, that's not really an issue. But what is the issue here? The issue here, very importantly, is the simple fact that women want control. In particular, feminists want control, but women want control. Uh, the simple fact is that the 
true power of a female has always been, again, remains to be, remains to be, um, and will always remain until that changes, uh, will, is her reproduction, her ability to produce children, her uterus, her prize. I think Girl Rights Watch um, said once something to the effect that an ejaculation that's worth 10 cents a uterus and a pair of ovaries, a couple of mil, something along those lines. But what if you were to empower men with the ability to make decisions about their own reproduction, reproductive rights, about their own ability to dispense sperm or not, about their own desire to inseminate or not? What happens to the vortex of female power in that context? I would say it dwindles and rather rapidly, if not vanishes. By giving men the ability to control their own reproduction, essentially, you would effectively decouple women from their rather lofty positions of power. Because all of those positions of power, whatever their derivatives uh, might be, um, the ultimate derivative, the ultimate source of that power is their uterus, their ability to reprodu reproduce, their access to their own means of birth control, and all the consequences that follow from that. What are those cons some of those consequences? Some of them are, for example, the ability to trick a man into getting uh, her pregnant, the ability to, on the other opposite end of the uh, spectrum, to claim that she wants to get pregnant when the man is trying to found a family, let's say, and in fact not get pregnant. There, there, there are many, many aspects of this, but it all comes from this one unique, rather unique, unfortunately not so unique, but unique to, to half of humanity, their ability to uh, bear children. So much opposition to that. Now, if you pay attention, close attention to the video, you'll see that one of the females in the, uh, the interviewing uh, section makes a little snipe after at, at the doctor at men, she says, uh, I'm assuming it was transcribed correctly, oh, so it was women who were opposed to that, oh, I thought it was male psychosis, couldn't let that one go, huh? No, so it's very clear, I think, from this video, and from the comments of the doctor, that, that women are, will have been, and universally will be opposed to male birth control. Yes, ostensibly, if you were to ask them, they might say something effective, oh, of course, I mean, you know, we want men to have those rights too, and oh, it would be very liberating, and we wouldn't have to take the pill anymore, and blah, blah, blah. But women, who are always thinking about their own advantage, who have no sense of honor whatsoever, uh, except to service their own self-entitlement and needs uh, regarding their self-entitlement, would, would never willingly relinquish uh, access, sole access to reproduction control and modification. It's not going to happen. Um, and one of the reasons why it's not going to happen is because, as he mentions, politically, uh, this one will sim simply never come to be. In a society where fully half of the population, and perhaps tons of manginas along with them, would vehemently oppose the introduction, the allowance of access to a male pill, This will never happen. This will simply never come to be, and this will never happen. But we see, once again, very clearly, these are one of my favorite phrases the proof is in the pudding. Uh, pudding is there. The pudding is, is, is reprodu reproductive rights, reproductive control. And the proof is in the very obvious statements on the part of feminists back then but also my own experiences in, in, in real life, having talked to some of the female uh, sex about this, that women do not want men uh, to have access to male birth control. Um, it, it would be devastating to their, their grip, their stra stranglehold on, on power. Um, and that's just, that's just it. It's not going to happen. 
Of course, there could be a black market for it. I mean, steroids. Uh, there's a huge black market for steroids, even though in most quote-unquote civilized countries they're uh, only available if through prescription. Although, I guess this in this case, this this would be sort of like crack in a way, right? I mean, this would be super, super, super illegal. Um, but it is a very important issue. It's a very important topic of discussion because we really see so clearly what women want and what they don't want. They don't want men to have any autonomy and control over their lives. They want men to remain and continue to be dependent on women and women's uh, sole means of controlling reproduction. That's what they want. And what does that show you? That shows you, a la Brifo's law, that women are always looking out for their own, their own advantage. They have no sense of justice. They have no sense of so-called equality. I don't even, it's, you know, I, I can just laugh when women talk about this. It's simply not true. Why wouldn't they give men access uh, as well to the so-called pill? Well, if they did, men would have a lot more control. Mind you, not all control would be lost because men would still chase after um, female orifices like they always used to. But some of the most critical things, um, in particular this issue that was brought up in a very recent, uh, regarding alimony and being thrown in jail for child support by Barbarossa, I mean, that, that would be, you would have a lot more control over stuff like that. <clears throat> There would no longer be unwanted pregnancies. Oh, I didn't know I got pregnant. Things along those lines. So, I would suggest we all read up on this. Uh, it's in a way, in a way, one of the key central issues uh, to men's rights movement, uh, to men's issues in general. Why don't we have access to a pill? It's not because they haven't come up with something along those lines. It's because the women don't want us to have access to a pill. Now, every man in such a situation would decide for himself whether he wants to take the thing. But uh, the point is, it seems, according to the doctor, it seems pretty safe. It doesn't have any negative health effects, no effects on the liver and so on and so forth. So what's the problem? It's political in nature. In particular, in particular, it's, it's female in nature. Women don't want men to take the pill, even though the pill is out there. Proof is in the pudding, folks. Sorry, this stuff just gets me down, you know, especially the most recent video by Barbara Russell. And I'm going to talk about that in a bit. But anyway, that's all I really had to say about this. So thanks for watching.